Today's guest is Jen Jensen. She is a partner at Applied Technology Solutions, LLC. And Jen and I have known each other for, oh gosh, it's, it's been quite a few years now. We work together at the Millennium Challenge Corporation. She's amazing. She kept me on task and we just keep in touch and, and try to touch base every so often. But thanks for joining me on the podcast, Jen. Absolutely. I've been, um, I would say eager to do this, but a little <laughs> terrified too, but you got me. So yeah. And you were the only person that would get to work slightly earlier than me, which was <laughs> 6.30. Then yes. yeah, we, we did a lot um, before 8 a.m. So yeah, that's fantastic. It's the best time to get work done. Yeah. So talk about, so for those who haven't had a chance to get to know you like I have, talk about yourself, talk about where you're from, who you are and what you do. So I'm from San Antonio, Texas. Uh, my parents lived in the outskirts of the city in a small, tiny city called Elmendorf. And um, yeah, I it was a 30 to 40 minute track to get from my house to school. And my parents did the best that they could. Mm -hmm. um, they sent me to, uh, to private school. And when it came time to graduate high school, they said, all right, well, we've, we've done our thing. So whatever you do is on you. Oh, okay. My dad was pushing me to go into the air force because San Antonio, um, my mom, she knew that I would probably not make it in a controlled environment like that. <laughs> um, so I was 17 and I had graduated, so it was a little early, I wasn't 18, couldn't quite do everything I wanted to do and save the world. Um, but I did find a job at Lackland Air Force Base as a GS-2. Ah. Um, yeah, that's um, low-hanging fruit. I think that's about the lowest you could go. Um, but, you know, I learned a lot there. And um, I worked just on the other side of the 37th training wing, so for everyone who has gone through that parade field. That uh, I was, was I was probably watching you from the building. <laughs> <laughs> um, I So I was there for, I don't know, it, it seemed like 5,000 years, but um, I, re I just remember briefly, you know, it, I don't know, maybe six months, eight months. Um, and then I, um, my parents didn't go to college. Uh, no one in my family had. So we never had the college discussion. Mm. Uh, that's why my dad was pushing the military. Um, and my parents just didn't know how to talk to me about it. Uh, so that left, you know, me to my own devices. So I started at community college and I'm a terrible test taker. So, mm. um, when it comes to standardized tests and before we've had, you know, classifications of like help, right. I probably need a little more time there or there. Um, they put me in remedial math. <laughs> and, <laughs> and which is hilarious. I, to be completely honest, I think I fell asleep during uh, taking the test. Um, so it probably wasn't reflective of, you know, accurately. Um, but I sailed through through that. Um, and I was able to maintain a 4.0. And because of that, and where I went to high school, I got a, a pretty good scholarship for the University of Incarnate Word. Um, so I was there for four years. I did an exchange program uh, to Spain. So um, it was just me by myself in a backpack um, in Madrid and about 32 cities. And it's so wonderful to uh, be broke in college and you have no worries. Um, <laughs> I, had a, I had a great time, came back and adjusted to the real world. Um, I, I quickly found out that government doesn't really pay very much, especially at a GS2 level. Um, and a bunch of my friends are going to bars and hanging out. And I said, hmm, let's capitalize on this. I still have to work and I have to go to school and I have to maintain a GPA in order to keep my scholarship. So logically, I became a bartender and... <laughs> Um, I, I bartended for uh, about five years, paid my way through school. Um, I was able to keep my, um, uh, my GPA up. I graduated summa cum laude and, um, yeah. And I love school so much that 
in quick fashion, I got my master's degree there too. And wow. I didn't really know what to do. So at that time I was working at a local retail store. And if you're from South Texas, you know, there's, there are clear lines and it's really hard. So either you're healthcare, you're a state or local county, you know, employee, or you're a doctor or you're military. And there is mm -hmm. really, you know, this was before, you know, the Deloitte's of the world and consulting was a thing because I had no idea what was out there. Um, at this time I was working, uh, for a marketing firm. So I went from, you know, bartending and doing all of that. And I would write all of my, um, all of my notes on postcards and keep that behind the bar. And mm -hmm. if it was ever slow, which it rarely was, but I would just study. Um, that's how I was able to do it. I couldn't do it right now. Um, so. Yeah, that's interesting. No, oh, oh, hold on then. What were your degrees in? I just got a business, um, okay. so business administration, uh, but I loved statistics and I loved numbers. Hmm. Um, and I remember I, I was always the type of student to sit in the back of the class, be really quiet. And at the time I would smuggle in my French bulldog and sit at the back of the class and just play with him. Um, he was really small. His name was radio. He was really cute. Um, he, uh, yeah. And I remember that there was only three tests in the whole semester. And the first one, you know, I don't think the, the professor thought, you know, much of anybody, we were all new. And, um, he pointed out when he was, uh, handing back the tests that someone, um, got an A and the next highest score was in the forties. Oh, wow. He proceeded to call me up. <laughs> um, I, I, he said, um, I could have busted the bell curve and you know, whatever, whatever they needed. But, um, he, he then asked me as an aside, if I would help, um, tutor some of the kids. So I did that in all of my spare time and yeah, it was great. Um, I loved it, but I still had no idea what I wanted to do. And uh, through a friend, I started working for army racing and I traveled the country actually with every NASCAR site I've been there. Hmm. Um, it was a huge recruitment effort for army and, um, and it got me, you know, out and to see things from a totally different perspective. I kind of felt like a roadie at, you know, if you were to follow your favorite band across the country and, uh, and because I was flying so much, I would get upgraded. Um, and so one day I'm sitting there studying on a plane and this man sees what I'm doing and he said, you know what are you studying? It's like uh, statistics. And, uh, and he started chatting with me and he said that I would, Oh, my, my grow light, um, started chatting and he said, I'd make a great business analyst. I had no idea what that was. And, uh, but I didn't let him know. I just let on, like I knew what he was talking about. And he gave me his card and he said, when you're three months out of graduation, shoot me an email and I'll see if I can't find a position for you. Hmm. Okay. Time comes, shot him an email. He remembered me. And within, I think two months, I had an interview, um, in Alexandria, Virginia and, um, got a job offer and I moved myself a really big truck and two dogs, um, <laughs> from, you know, bottom of Texas to, uh, Northern Virginia. That was really hard. That would be hard. Yeah. It's like a 25 hour journey, 26 yeah. hour journey. Uh, oh yeah. And I was doing it in F250 power stroke, super diesel, <laughs> with an eight inch lift. Uh, wow. Clearly I'd never been here. Didn't know anything about garages <laughs> or, you know, how narrow some streets could be. Uh, that truck didn't last very long, but, um, I came up here, the VA was one of my first, it, it was actually my first government uh, uh, client. And I remember I worked on um, 
I worked on a, a couple of white papers that were sent to Congress about telehealth, specifically uh, for the VA and mental health issues and, you know, barriers to access, not only for patients, but providers as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was back on the road, you know, doing another tour between VA systems all across um, everywhere from Walla Walla, Washington to White River Junction, Vermont. Um, and, you know, I learned a lot. Uh, it was a focus group setting and, you know, being able to listen to, you know, what impacts, uh, you know, some people have, um, whereas, you know, we would never think of anything. So, for instance, if you live in Washington State, you're probably going to have to take a barge. And the VA only pays for one way. And a lot of them are on fixed income, so they can't really afford to go. And um, so that was great and learned a lot, but uh, it probably paid slightly more than ramen noodles. And it just really wasn't there for me. So I um, I was able to find uh, actually one of the neighbors in the little apartment place that I was living. Uh, she worked at CGI Federal and I was able to get a job there and, um, you know, became one of those, I don't know, um, I was like a consultant, you know, like you just go from job to job to job, you follow the money, you follow the contracts. And mm-hmm. then sometimes if you make good with a C-suite, they bring you over whenever, um, they move or jump ship. Mm-hmm. Uh, Interesting. While you're drinking, um, um, and I was going to say, um, you've provided two extremely great examples of why networking is important. Oh, yeah. And yeah. networking doesn't happen just because there's a networking event and it's yeah. every happy hour, right? It happens wherever you are, your neighbor or somebody you may, uh, while you're traveling. Yeah. Um, I, I, that's fantastic. So I just wanted to highlight that, that good job. That's something Thank I really reinforced with early career people. And so it's, it's great to see that. Yeah. Uh, it's thank you so much. Um, yeah, I actually never really put that correlation together, but it does come back, uh, to, so we're going to proceed on, uh, to some other roles that are kind of slightly more recent. Um, I, I was able to make some friends in in this industry. And I didn't realize how small it was. Everybody knows everybody and, or they know someone who knows someone. And it's it's just watching like LinkedIn come to life sometimes. And whew, it's like seven degrees of separation is a little scary, but um, I don't know, over the course of like the last probably five years, I realized how much I loved not only writing and researching, but I loved data, came right back to it, right? And what you can use it for and the power behind it. And I was working on some side projects um, as, you know, a project manager with some other, with some other side hustle people. And um, I became really good friends with a bunch of them. And about six months ago, I said, hey guys, we have all of this capability. Why don't we just like come together, form one entity and let's go do really cool stuff with really good people. Hmm. And, and that's, that's been our, yeah, that's kind of been our MO, um, you know, since day one. Um, and yeah, leveraging not only a network that you've met along the way, but these are people that, you know, I met once before and I just had a great conversation with them, kept in touch. And then, Hey, do you want to be a partner in, you know, the submission that I'm doing? Because I think we have great, you know, there's something that we need and we can both benefit from it. Um, so yeah, so that, that brings me here. And I work with, you know, some of my best friends and they are, um, they are, so much smarter than me in their expertise and it is no t- no day is the same and I'm, I learn something new every day. I love that. I love that. I mean, you and I have talked a lot about uh, since, since we worked together about the the various things we were trying to figure out in our careers. And so I love that this, this uh, idea flourished and that people responded. Um, is it focused 
I'm curious, is it focused um, in gover government or is it a little bit hybrid? It's a little bit of hybrid. Um, right now, uh, I have, <laughs> um, I've got a bunch of papers on my desk. <laughs> um, we, we do, it's a lot of um, open source intelligence work. Mm -hmm. um, so everything from signals um, to imagery to um, you name it, we do it. And financial intelligence has been a huge part of it. Mm. Um, so, you know, um, seized assets and sanctions and all the things I never thought I would know or be interested in, you know, asked me 20 years ago and I would say no way. Uh, finance wasn't really my thing. And, um, but here I am. And it's been, it's been great uh, because there's a couple of different things. So one part is training, um, you know, either like a sanctions 101. We also have a money laundering, uh, an anti, uh, yeah, anti-money laundering course. We work with um, state and local officials. Um, we are responding to a couple of federal opportunities, but right now we're primarily, I'm focused on some SIBRs and um, some things that just came out of the um, Defense Intelligence University. Hmm. So trying to get some funding for some other projects that, you know, we just need, you know, additional software and tools in order to, yeah, to make this whole master plan come to life. That's amazing. So, um, wow. So how... And we also do international. So I am oh, wow. responding yeah. to uh, to something right now with some strategic partners. Um, and this is the strategic partner is in uh, the Europe region and, <laughs> and it's to support um, the Middle East region. Wow. So that's very interesting. So um, now this is not your, this is not you know, what you went to school for, right? Business administration, I guess, does kind of fit in anywhere. Yeah. And I know you've um, done a lot of work as a business analyst. You've done some work as a uh, kind of project manager. Um, and is that similar to what you're doing now in, in your current role? Or is it much, is it a higher level at this point? You know, I wish it was a higher level. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you are trying to get a, a business off the ground, right? So yes. a little bit of everything. <laughs> it, yeah, you know, everything from the, you know, administrative of, you know, paying invoices and <laughs> contractors to strategic partnerships and um, finding entities that'll complement, you know, our suite of tools and expertise. Um, and then, you know, going and finding interesting things. Um, yeah, it's, I spend a lot of time at this desk and, um, and on my computer, but, you know, you just, you just never know what, who needs help in doing what. And um, it, it's really interesting to hear, uh, yeah, just what people are up to and what they need help on, because I've come to realize that I know a lot of people and then who know also a lot of people. So I've been able to, you know, make those network connections for, you know, if I can't help you, but this person can. Mm. And, um, yeah. And it's been that system has been really kind and good to me. So just continue, just continue being nice and asking if you can help. So as you've gone through your career journey, because you've been you've been a few places and you've done a few things and, and it's all amazing. And it's very fascinating to me how, you know, when somebody gets to the point where they've started their own business, but along the way, I'm sure there's been a, a challenge or not even, a, you know, maybe it's not a challenge. Maybe it's just something you were looked at and went, man, I, I, I hate it that we have to do it that way. Um, what's something that if we came to you, Jen, and said, Jen, you today have the power to make a change for the betterment of everybody who's come behind you, what's a change that you might uh, suggest we we consider? I would say, and I do this with my analysts. Um, so I have some senior analysts and I have some junior analysts. And this is actually something that I learned at Millennium Challenge Corporation. And um, I... I just, I never knew what, you know, a morning standup was. And, and I've been able to squeak by without, you know, a PMP certification. I, I just, I'm, I'm word of mouth at this point. Um, but I stood in there and I listened and 
you know, just five minutes. What are you doing today? What are you working on? And do you need any help? And that really resonated with me because then I was able to identify, you know, further down the road, not only what people are doing, but when you have other people that are part of the team who are interested in learning and not, and they don't feel like they have a voice mm -hmm. to ask. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times it's because they're young, they're young and they're intimidated. And if you don't ask, you won't get it. Um, so I make it a point, every new project and opportunity that, you know, we have on the board, um, you know, I ask, you know, my senior analyst, you know, can you take the lead on this? And can you work with this analyst to, um, you know, help her out in, in, in this capacity? Um, and so sometimes that'll be, you know, I'll just call it a mentorship of a couple of weeks. And sometimes it's a couple of months, but I get really great feedback because it opens the door to something that they wouldn't have necessarily known. And mm. they didn't know that they could, that, that they could. And sometimes they're interested in doing more of it. And sometimes hard pass, not for me. I'm interested in something else and, you know, no love lost. I'm happy to help set them up in, you know, other projects that they're interested in. That's amazing. That's a great suggestion. Uh, absolutely something that I've learned as well over the years is how important it is to have those touch points where everybody, everybody can speak up and it's yeah. not shame. It's open, uh, open opportunity. Um, and it does, it gets the job done, right. It, it, and it brings everybody to be part of the team. Yes. Yes. And I was able, I don't know if you ever played, um, poker planning, but that was it when done right. It is a lot of fun. And this is from my nerd side of it, right? <laughs> um, I had a team of 15 developers and we were we were doing our sprint planning. And I booked a three hour meeting and nobody was happy about that. And I said, all right, guys, hold on, hold on. Nobody's happy. I get it. But just give me a chance, like give it a shot. And it actually worked out really well. Um, so you have one story and um, you ask everyone the level of effort. So it could be anywhere from, you know, five to 10 hours, 10 to 20, whatever it is. And um, you get the feedback and you're able to, there's easier ways to do it now, um, but you get the highest um, LOE and the lowest LOE. And you ask why, like, why do you say this is gonna take 500 hours and you say this is gonna take five? Mm -hmm either I'm not explaining it right, or you got a different idea or opinion. And so opening up that forum um, was really great because, you know, this guy says like, no, it's not a big deal at all. It's, it's this fix. And then, oh, okay. So we all learned something. And although it was a really big time, three hours is a really long time. Um, but it, that was probably one of the most successful projects I was ever on. Hmm. Well, Jen, I'm your fan, as you know, and I, I'm very excited for this new venture and can't wait to see what happens. I'm very curious. Um, do you know what's next for, for, for the company and for yourself going into the new year? So we have a huge, um, a huge undertaking. It's been our passion project and one of the first initiatives that we started when we became this. Um, it's actually a, has to do with cryptocurrency and um, digital assets. So identifying, finding, working with the government to hmm. impose sanctions. Um, a lot of things I never thought I would ever be interested in, but hmm. it yeah, cryptocurrency became a thing. A lot of people got on it and, you know, it gets a bad rap, uh, but it is so important for a lot of, a lot of developing countries um, because they have to do so much uh, under the radar of their government. So it, it does good, but it also does a lot of great. Wow. It'd be very interesting to hear how that project goes. And and I'll be have a conversation with you, you know, six months from now and, and see what we uh, learn about when it comes to uh, uh, Bitcoin and, and other currencies and yep. see where you've come. 
Well, Jen, as always, I, I love interacting with you. Thank you for coming on the podcast today. And I can't wait to see uh, what, what happens in the new year. Thank you so much, Jeremy. I will talk to you soon.